next speaker has trained over 250,000 professionals and served more than 850 companies worldwide about LinkedIn. To share how we can leverage LinkedIn as a powerful business tool for our firms, please welcome our keynote speaker, Richard Vanderblom. Good morning. Good morning, you all. I've been in Austin now about a bit more than 24 hours, and I've noticed that everything is warm in Austin. The welcome, <laughs> the people, well, let's not talk about the weather. <laughs> it's warm. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I've been invited to talk with you about LinkedIn and how your companies can benefit from it. Um, if you already think I've made an impression so far, you can connect with me and scan the QR code. If not, the same QR code will be at the end of the presentation. Um, let me tell you how my journey started on LinkedIn. It was back in 2005, I'm Dutch, and I just joined a staffing company and I had a three-day onboarding training. And the best parts of trainings are always like the evening at the bar, you know, when you get to meet, that's true, no? <laughs> when you get to meet your new colleagues and the trainer, and the trainer was actually, he was from, um, from Baltimore. And he said to me like, you need to go on LinkedIn because that's the next big thing. So I became very enthusiastic, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, I signed up for LinkedIn back in 2005. I started to invite my, the people I know. And when I woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning, I got a lot of people, like, really angry emails that said, like, what the hell are you spamming me with? What is this? Because, you know, 2005, people were like. And then I signed up again in 2006, and here I am, like, 17 years, 18 years later, running a business that is, like, mainly focused 100% on how to leverage LinkedIn for your sales, marketing, recruitment purposes. I know it's early, but I want to do a little bit of interaction. Can you please stand up, all? Okay. I have some questions for you. First question. If you don't have an individual LinkedIn profile, you can sit down. Imagine if I would have done it the other way around. No, everybody sit. If you don't, let's stand up. Okay. Second question. If you have never published yourself a post on your LinkedIn network from your personal profile, please sit down. Okay, if you haven't published a post in the last month, please sit down. There we go. If you haven't published your post in the last week, sit down. Wow, impressive. If you publish more than one post each week, repost, do not count. If, if you don't, let me rephrase it, if you don't publish more than once a week without reposting, you can sit down. Okay, let's give an applause to the people who are still standing. <laughs> Does your company has a LinkedIn strategy? Some people not, some people are looking. Actually, LinkedIn strategy doesn't exist. You know, you have a sales strategy, a marketing strategy, a recruitment strategy, and it's about how to implement LinkedIn in that strategy. Another question, does your company has an employee advocacy program? I see some people nodding. Okay, that's good. I don't mean this. <laughs> okay. Because if I go to companies and we talk like, about a LinkedIn employee advocacy program, a lot of people, yeah, yeah, we created all the same banners for the people, we share content, they're all reposting it. That's not what I mean. I mean employee advocacy is mean how are you facilitating your people to become thought leaders, to become experts in their field of, uh, of industry. Why LinkedIn? Okay, why LinkedIn? It's just some facts. First of all, Please don't consider LinkedIn anymore as social media. That's probably one of the most common mistakes that marketing people do. They treat LinkedIn in the same way how they treat Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, or anything else. Because LinkedIn, for me, is a business tool. It has really transformed the way how we sell, market, and recruit in a B2B environment. Um, if it wouldn't exist tomorrow, I know a lot of marketing people in B2B, a lot of recruiters especially, but also a lot of salespeople would have a serious problem. This is some stats about buyers. 
If you compare buyer behavior on LinkedIn to, for example, any other social media, the numbers of how buyers use LinkedIn in order to find relevant information, the trustworthiness of the platform is much higher than any other social media. So, and buyers are really becoming more and more active every day on LinkedIn. They don't necessarily search for your company page. They search for content and they search for what they call thought leaders, peers, influencers, people who share the good stuff that they want to have. More data on that later on. More numbers. I did my research, 700,000 decision makers in the US on LinkedIn that are, could be relevant for the AEC industries, as well as two and a half million influencers. I'm talking about project managers, buyers, who you could connect with, could communicate with, in order to like, influence the way how they look at your company. In July, they created 630,000 updates. When I train salespeople, I'm always very surprised that the majority of salespeople, if I say, how do you use LinkedIn in order to get information, they say, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling and refreshing and scrolling. Believe me, that's not the best time that you are spending on LinkedIn, because LinkedIn determines what we see, okay? And you only see about 15% of your connections. You don't see more because of the algorithm. Every update on LinkedIn, if you know how, is scannable. So I can look for certain kind of keywords even outside my network. This means if you know this, and if your salespeople know that, that they can use it as a huge lead generation. 24,000 changed jobs in the last three months. I'm talking about decision makers. It's a common fact that when decision makers change jobs, they're more open to discuss with new potential suppliers. And another thing, I've been in sales since 99.9, we need more touching points compared to like three, four, five years ago. We need more touching points with our clients. For me, LinkedIn is like a perfect instrument, a perfect platform to have more touching points. Simply by commenting on a post I see from them, simply by sending them a message, by liking things, I show up in their feed more often. So what are some common pitfalls? And maybe some pain points, maybe you recognize this from your own company. Lack or wrong ownership, I'm talking about a company page. You wouldn't imagine to how many companies I go and then the company page is like, it's from HR. <laughs> it's not from marketing, definitely, it's from HR. This is where we post our vacancies. This is where we try to hire talent. A company page needs to be from HR, marketing, and sales. And in your company, you need to have a chat on how are we going to use it because you need to trust the algorithm. Job postings will find a way to potential uh, talents, but if you have awesome marketing com uh, content and you publish it on LinkedIn, it will find its way to your potential buyers. Ignoring employee advocacy. I have some more stats. Your employees are your most important asset on LinkedIn. I cannot stress that enough. And I'm quite happy with the American culture. I'm Dutch. It resembles a lot on Dutch. We are very liberal, okay? So we help our employees to become active. I also, every now and then, I travel to Germany, to France. They have a different culture. You as an employee, you don't do anything because we have a guideline on what you should not do on LinkedIn, okay? So I'm very happy when I have like uh, US clients, England clients, because they know how to facilitate the employees. Lack of diversification of content, okay? We need to have different types of content in order to attract the right people to follow the company page. I will share more on that later on. And then not engaging with the community, which means we have a company page, we post, and that's it. We don't follow up, we don't engage, for sure not are going to answer to questions that we get. You know, it's like a one direction channel, it's not working. The algorithm on LinkedIn actually gives more reach to your company page and your individual page if you engage yourself as well. And then lack of, consistent, uh, lack of a consistent strategy. So what is the solution? So a lot of employee advocacy tools, they have like this kind of pictures, which it looks very cool, no? You have 100 employees, they have on average 500 uh, network, they have 10 shares a month, so we reach half a million audience. Unfortunately, it doesn't work this way. 
Indeed, as an accelerator, but because of the algorithm, you have less reach, okay? But employees are your best ways to get more reach. Another solution, try to create thought leaders in your company. I'm not necessarily talking about director level or executive level, but thought leaders. This could be salespeople, this could be a recruiter. Try to facilitate people in your company to become the person to go to in the network. Stand out. Okay, I see a lot of companies do exactly the same thing on LinkedIn over and over again. Okay, we have a white paper, we publish the white paper. We have a webinar, we publish the sign up for the white. Try to stand out in how you publish your content, but also how you follow up on your content. A company page that actively is engaging with like a network of peers, influence, and clients gets much more visibility, much more reach. But also, if you're going to create banners for your employees, do not create one or two, but create 10 or 15, okay? Give them an option. Or maybe have their own profile pictures included in the banner so it's personalized. Consistency is key on LinkedIn, okay? So it's, you will not see the same results if, for example, this week, you're going to publish three posts on LinkedIn on your company page, and then like the next two weeks, we're in Austin, we are busy, so we don't publish anything. If you come back after three weeks and publish again, you get significant less reach because LinkedIn values consistency. It's better to publish once or twice a week and maintain this for let's say three months than to have three posts now, three weeks nothing, three posts then, okay? Because the algorithm will really like slash um, you're rich. And then you only get one shot. <laughs> it's true. Ask your salespeople. If they identify a potential client, they send out an invitation, it's declined, they cannot send it again. They can, three weeks later, but it will not be accepted. If you publish a white paper or an article and you have like huge expectations and it only reaches 3,000 views, it's practically impossible to publish it again. Okay, so you need to do it right from the beginning. Question, what should be the main focus of marketing on LinkedIn? What should be your main goal? Just shout something. The first thing, sorry? Trust, I like that one. Educate. Educate. Visibility. Visibility, that's cool. Nobody says leads, nobody says leads, generating leads. That's good. Generating leads is almost impossible for marketing. From your company page, almost impossible. And I will give you the proof later on. Brand awareness should be the main focus. You should help the company to get more visibility, to build more trust, and to help your salespeople to sell more easily. This is what sales need to do from the individual profiles, generating leads. So we are looking for marketing and sales alignment which in a lot of companies is a problem. Marketing and sales alignment on LinkedIn, it's difficult. No. I don't know why. I have my IDs. I mean, I know marketing is for 80% the women's job, sales is for 80% the sales job, so maybe the communication is not that good. But we need to find alignment. With my Spanish colleague, Eduardo, I created a, a post, I will repost it tomorrow again on LinkedIn about 10 ideas how to create real sales and marketing alignment on LinkedIn. And it goes from, you know, create a manual on how we want to build our individual profiles, co-create a sales book, but also um, co-create content. Some insights. The algorithm is powerful, I already said it. From your own, from your own profile, if you have a thousand connections and you keep scrolling, LinkedIn will only show you about 15% of your connections, which means 85% of your connections. They might publish content, you just will never see it. This also works the other way around, okay? So if you publish something, don't think that, oh, my whole network is going to see this, it's impossible. Average reach of a company page amongst your followers, 2%. So if you have 10,000 followers and you publish, you get 200 views, that's where it begins. This is what happened over the last three years with our LinkedIn feed. The first two categories 
promoted company posts, so you are actually paying LinkedIn for more reach, and own LinkedIn ads have increased from one out of six to one out of three. So if I scroll, one, of out, one out of each three posts is a LinkedIn ad or promoted post. So it's not something I really want to see. Organic company posts went down from 9% to 2%. So you have a challenge. And the next challenge is that content from regular content creators, the ones that don't publish every week, has gone down from 62 to 34%. Content from top creators, those are the ones who at least publish two posts a week. They get more visibility for LinkedIn. That's why you need to create thought leaders, because people who publish more good stuff, they get more reach. Google has started to index not only your profiles, but also your content. So if people Google me, normally you would see the LinkedIn profile first. Now you get directly to my best post of last year which is about the LinkedIn algorithm. So think what this means for individuals in your company. If your salespeople, your executives are sharing good stuff on LinkedIn, they will be indexed by Google and people go directly to your content. We need to adapt the content funnel, or we need to adapt the content to the funnel. Let me uh, give you an example. I worked with a UK-based company, and marketing created this really cool white paper about Trends in Sustainable Building Materials, Development Trends, nine pages. They gave it to sales and they said, like, okay, go to your sales navigator, identify your prospect, share it with the prospects, and we will also share it on the company page. And they were very disappointed with the results. They got 4,000 views on the company page and they got less than 5% acceptance on the outgoing emails and connection requests from sales with the content that they said, like, this is going to be a huge conversation starter. The problem was not the content itself, the problem was the white paper, nine pages. So I don't know you, I send you an email and say like, hey, we don't know, but we have a white paper you must read. It's nine pages. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, but they were very convinced this is going to work. It's not, because if you have the white paper, you're lower in the funnel. You're already communicating one-on-one. -on -one. You have built your trust, and you want to like stimulate engagement or realize conversion, you say like, hey, we have been talking about these new materials. We have a white paper, but that's lower in the funnel. People would say, yeah, send it to me. As a conversation starter, what we did, we, we transformed the white paper into an infographic. One pager, six trends, visually explained, and we say, okay, start using this. Or, uh, an infographic, reach out. And instead of 4%, they reached about 40% conversion. Why? Because if you ask upon request or upon connection, for 20 seconds, 30 seconds of time, you will get it. But you don't get like 20 minutes of my time to watch a 10 minute video, to read a nine page white paper, or to download stuff that you have gated and I need to like, sorry, I need to share my contact details. So adapt your content to each stage of the funnel. So we need different types of content for different stages of the funnel. Average reach of a company page, 2%. Average engagement, 0.44%. It's low, okay? It's low on average. Individual profile, we reach about 10%. More importantly, we reach about 7 to 8% more engagement from an individual profile. So, salespeople, executives, thought leaders that share exactly the same content as you do on a company page, they get eight times more engagement, eight times more likes, eight times more comments, because on LinkedIn, People like to communicate one-on-one. -on -one. Following of a company page, it's almost not done anymore. People do not follow very easily company pages anymore because they're not interested in a company. They're interested in a person um, with whom they can communicate. As an example, I did a post about me speaking for the Sales Navigator community of LinkedIn. Uh, we posted on the company page 143 impressions. I published the same post on my own profile, 4,000 impressions. So you see it's 20 times more, even more, 25 times more. Exact same post from a company profile compared to an individual profile. Okay, some tips. Posting on LinkedIn, what do you need to know? Who publishes content on LinkedIn? That's what I asked you in the beginning, you know, when you stand up and you can, only 1% publishes content at least once a week. 
935 million people, only 9 million people publish at least once a week. 5% has published at least once in the last three months. 16% of all members, they don't publish, but they do engage. They like your post, they comment your post, they share your post. This is what we call your content ambassadors. Because when they do this, they increase your reach. Now, the most important insight is the silent community. 64% of people do not publish content on LinkedIn. They do not like, they do not comment, they do not repost, they're practically invisible. However, they consume your content. They scroll, they read, they click, they watch your video, but they will never give you a like or a comment or repost. They just don't want to be seen. And this is where 95% of your clients are. Because a buyer or a potential client is not going to engage with your post because he doesn't want to be follow up. So that's why he starts to read. And this behavior typically results, I get about one, maybe two emails a week now of people saying like, hi Richard, I'm, I've been following you on LinkedIn for several months and I really would like to have a chat with you about your training for our companies. And then I go like, who's this guy? And I look at the name, we're not connected. He never engaged with my post, but he has followed me for several months. So people wait, consume your content until they think the time is right. Have you heard about dwell time on LinkedIn? Dwell time implemented about two years ago. When LinkedIn realized, and they really hate this number, that 64% of the community goes silent so they don't engage. And we all know that traditionally on social media, your reach gets higher if people like, comment, share. If 64% of that of the people don't do that, they need to have this behavior included into the algorithm. So what they did, they said from now on, we're going to look how long does your post stay in the screen of your audience? Do they click on see more? After the first three lines, you see the see more button, okay? A click on see more is a very powerful signal from the silent community that they're engaging because they wanna read the rest of your post. And if they click on see more, how much time do they spend after this? So this is the behavior of 64% of the LinkedIn members that they have included in the algorithm. This means that if you're going to look how to create the perfect post, that we have some ingredients to consider. A scroll stopper could be the visual or a different font. A trigger for your audience in the first three lines is a must because we want people to click on see more. In fact, people clicking on see more will bring you more additional reach than people giving you a like. Imagine this. So people that like your post bring you less additional reach than people clicking on see more because LinkedIn values the behavior of the silent community. And if they want to continue reading, they click see more. So we need to have longer posts, okay? We don't wanna have posts from three or four lines because screen time is not enough. Tag people or companies only if it's relevant for them. Always use between three and five hashtags. Always, doesn't matter which hashtag. Always make sure to have between three and five hashtags. Use a call to think, call to feel, and then a LinkedIn signature. Ever heard of that, a LinkedIn signature? It's something that you repeat on the bottom of your post. Could be on your individual profile, could be on a company page, that if your post is being shared into a new network, and it's about topic X, then in the signature you can tell people, I'm Richard, I normally publish about social selling and thought leadership on LinkedIn. So even if my post is about something else, people at the bottom see what is my core business and how can I benefit from it. This is an example. And you see below the name, my name is Richard, that whole part is my LinkedIn signature. So my name is Richard, supporting YouTube, and I repeat that at the bottom of every post, okay? So all the people that see my content for the first time, they know, okay, this is what Richard does, this is where I can follow it. And we have implemented this also with a lot of companies and it works. If you say, this is who we are, this is what we do, if you want to follow more of us, go there, click here, it works. The format of your post influences the performance. That's something that you really need to realize. External links, get much less reach, about 40% of average reach. And this is what still a lot of people do on a company page, okay? Because we wanna have traffic on the website. No, because as soon as you want to get people away from LinkedIn to your website, LinkedIn goes, uh-uh, that's not going to happen. So we're going to like really give you less reach. 
So better is to keep people engaged on LinkedIn. All the posts that you see, for example, a PDF post, a visual post with slides, polls, text, and multiple pictures. Probably tomorrow we'll create a post about this really cool event. Normally, four years ago, I would take my best picture and write that now I always have four or five pictures instead of one. Because it will accelerate the reach and the engagement of your post. Why? Because we need to think about increased dwell time. So how do we get people to spend more time on a post? Every click is engagement. Every click means additional reach. So if we go back to this slide, a PDF post, you're having six slides, and people click on the arrow to the right to see the next slide, means six clicks, means additional reach. Multiple pictures, the pictures are very small if you, if you upload multiple pictures. So what are people going to do? They're going to click on the pictures to go through the pictures, so you get more reach. So basically, think about how can we make people to spend more time on the content on the platform, and how can we, create, how can we make them click more on our content. Best time to post, morning of your target audience, always. LinkedIn needs about 60 minutes to check the value of your content. So the first 60 minutes, they share it with a very inner circle. Based on their engagement, they will either increase the reach, if you got a lot of engagement in the first hour, or if you have a lack of engagement, they will like fade out your post out of the feed. So the first 60 minutes is crucial. After the first 60 minutes, you want to have an entire working day where people can really engage with your content. ChatGPT. I could fill one hour, two hours about ChatGPT. Um, I don't like especially the way Wellington is going because they're implementing a lot of ChatGPT AI uh, features now on how to build your profile and how to create a post. The newest one is how to create a visual post on LinkedIn. Um, and I think LinkedIn is about trust, credibility, authenticity. But there is a great way how to use ChatGPT. And this, for example, can you provide me with six pillars for LinkedIn content strategy? Bam, you get the six pillars. You pick one pillar, you say, can you provide me with eight possible topics belonging to this pillar? You get eight topics. And from the topics, you can go to a post. And that's the moment that we as humans need to come in and say, okay, thank you for like, the structure, and now we're going to adjust it. Brand ambassadors. What you are going to ask from your employees is depending on the goal. So for example, if you ask your employees to repost a company page post, you will benefit as a company. They will not benefit. So if I'm working at your company, you ask me to I hit repost, your company gets more views, I will not get a lot of views. If you want to have visibility for the original post and your colleague, then ask them to comment. Okay, a comment brings the more additional reads, the most additional reads to your post. And it also is a way how people can like position themselves in their own network. If not, and you think, hey, they can use this type of content to generate leads, then just give them the content and let them create their own post. A like actually has no impact on LinkedIn. So asking them to like the content is not a great idea. Repost if you need more visibility, comment if they also need the visibility. Okay, final thoughts. So we have seen that business to business buyers are valuing LinkedIn, they're there. They're especially looking for case studies, best practices to see if you understand their industry. They're also looking for thought leaders. Employees outperform your corporate accounts. They get more reach, they are more connect uh, connective, and they get more engagement with exactly the same content. Marketing and sales need to align. I have been in sales all my life, and I have had many arguments with marketing because they would go like, this is what we want you to publish. This flyer you need to take. And I was like, this is not what we need. And if you make me more effective, if you make me more successful, then I start running also for you. So as a marketing, what we always try to realize with marketing is that we are going to guide our colleagues, our sales colleagues, maybe even our HR co uh, colleagues, how do you get more reach for your own profile? How do you get more um, uh, uh, leads, more connections? How do you get more impact with your content? If you help your employees to do that, they will start sharing more stuff. 
Great ambassadors, thought leaders. Don't underestimate the power that executives have on LinkedIn. I didn't brought a slide because I only had half an hour, but we did with several companies. We mobilized, we empowered the executives to become uh, more active on LinkedIn. So we started to optimize their profiles, we started to create posts for them, and they get a huge traction on LinkedIn because all the buyers, all your potential suppliers, they're also looking to the executives. So if you can mobilize an executive, and if you can help him or her to stand out on LinkedIn, you really see a, a boost also for your company page. And understand the algorithm for more reach. Never write for the algorithm, okay? I do a lot with the algorithm, and sometimes people get tired of me, and they go like, Richard, but the algorithm is like playing a board game, okay? Probably you, we've heard of Monopoly. You cannot win Monopoly if you don't know the rules, okay? There are two options how to win. Either you cheat or you know the rules. <laughs> That's exactly what the algorithm does. Write for the people, but adapt your content for the algorithm. So if you know about the rules of the algorithm, then you can get like three, four times more reach. More reach equals more engagement. More engagement equals more lead opportunities. Thank you for this. If you want to connect with me, scan the code. Um, I'll be around today, maybe even tonight. Uh, thank you for the opportunity.